Welcome to my crazy life. This is Lori and I'm coming to you from my craft room slash office now. I'm working on a plastic table. I hope it's not too bouncy um, because my craft table slash desk is in a different position because I'm working from home. So we had to do, you know, a little bit of moving around and whatnot, but I have a craft project for you today. We are gonna make Dollar Tree DIY topiaries. And all of these materials was purchased at the Dollar Tree. I didn't buy my paint at the Dollar Tree, but they do have paint. Just wanna say. So, materials that you'll need. I grabbed some yellow ribbon because my topiaries are gonna sit in my kitchen, which is black, white, and yellow. Yellow ribbon. I picked up two packages of these. If you don't find these, you could use foam balls and just glue um, the moss to them. But I have two packages because I want mine to be double high. You only want them single high? So be it. Then you just need a one package. Some skewers. This is one I cut, but these are just grilling skewers. I did use a little bit of wire. Paint brushes. These are from the Dollar Tree. I just used what I had. Some needle nose pliers, some wire nips, some scissors, craft scissors, not sewing scissors, paint. So I use, like I said, black and white chalk paint. This stuff dries pretty quickly. I grabbed the two pack of the terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree. Now I've already painted mine because this is how I wanted them. Um, but paint them whatever color you want. Now you can use some Excelsior or Moss either direction. I'll probably use the moss and then floral foam, my glue gun, glue sticks. Oh, and for the center of my bows, I'm going to use the pearls because that's what I wanted to match. I'm going to be probably hanging my pearl beads in the kitchen that I made. But if not, look at these beads to put in the center of the ribbon. But I will show you all that. I think that's everything. So let's flip you around and you can make some topiaries. And these are so easy and I think the kids would enjoy it as well. So give me one second. All right. So the first step I did, and I'm sorry if it's shaky, it's this table. I painted it one coat of white and then I did some black. You could seal these if you want. I'm not going to. Now what I need to do is get some floral foam. These were the pre-cut ones. I need to get them down in here. But I feel like I only really need one of these squares. I'm not, this is another one of my messy projects. Sorry, folks. All right. Yeah, I think that's perfect. So what I will do is just put some glue on the bottom of this foam and stick it down in the hole. It'll be fine. Kind of generous with it. Now there is a hole on, in the bottom of this so you just want to be a little careful but that's it because i'm going to stick uh, moss all the way around it how easy is that guys i have a whole different setup here i'm flipping out my life my house i don't typically work from home and so getting myself in the position to do that took a little bit but it's fine i'll have my setup so i'm going to do the second one i'm doing two I do most things in two, but also because I want to stick them on my kitchen window, I think. I don't know. I haven't set up for spring yet. Guys, I've been a little crazy. No spring set up. All right. And let's just get you down in there. And what you just want to do is push it all the way to the bottom. And then the glue will hold. Now, like this, you can see that paint's still a little more wet down there, but that's okay. I almost said moist again. People don't like moist. I don't know why, but they don't. Okay, next step. And this is probably the easiest thing you're going to do all day. Especially if your kids are home from school. Yeah, this is the easiest thing you're going to do all day. Now, as you can see, I painted my skewer um, for no other reason than in case it shows through. But take one of these balls. And you can go with the pointy end. I try to find the center. It's pretty easy to skewer it. Just don't, 
skewer your fingers when you're pushing through. If you're doing this with kids, maybe get it started for them and let them move the foam ball up. You do want to be a little gentle when you get to the tippity top. And then I'm just going to kind of move the moss so it covers that. And that is how simple it is. Now I am going to put a piece of, or a piece, a little dab of glue here. Nothing too major, just a dab. Mostly because I want it to stick to the skewer so it doesn't slide off. Um, but it is on there pretty good. Now we're going to do the secondary one. The reason I'm leaving this so long is I don't know how far into the foam I want it to go yet. But we're going to do this step first. And then we're going to go right in here. It's just easier if you use the pokey side. Not the hokey pokey. The pokey side. Now, we're going to go all the way up. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to put some more glue in here real quick. Just in between the two, hold this and push them together. And now I have my topiaries, and you can't see. So I didn't really have to paint them, but just in case I wanted to. And then we'll let that dry. And I'm going to show you that one more time. Maybe. Yes, I am. Okay. So I just, they're not good circles, I'm not going to lie. And I wouldn't try to poke these through more than a couple times or you're going to end up breaking your balls apart. <laughs> okay, so we're going all the way up to the top. I can also just do it like that. And then when I get up there, I'm just going to kind of mush it over. And if you don't cover it, it's not a big deal. What would also look super cute on these is some little white like petals of leaves or little tiny little white flowers would look really cute stuck to the, uh, oops, sorry, stuck to the ball, the moss ball that is. And then go for the next one. Watch your fingers. These skewers will cut you. You don't need to wet them or anything. Nobody's eating from this. Um, get it to right here. I'm going to Fill that with some glue again. And you just want to give it a second to dry, which is why we're doing both of them first. And if you push it onto the ground, it's pushing up against that or onto the table. There we go. I now have two topiaries. Well, the tops anyway. You can make a hundred of these. How easy was that? Now, here comes the super messy part. So what we're gonna do first <laughs> is make sure I have plenty of paper to get in here. I kind of was a bummed, I'm not a bummed, a little bummed. I would like to have had a different color moss, but I don't really know what other color there would be. I guess the brown. Um, but what I would like to do is just shove some moss down in here to kind of stabilize it. You could also put uh, your foam down there, but this is fine for me. It also will help it stay in place. I will glue the moss onto the top after I place the topiary stakes in there. And then I will show you when they're done. But this is so simple, guys. And like I said, all Dollar Tree. Ooh. This is also extremely messy. And you could um, use flowers instead, glue flowers to a foam ball. I mean, honestly, it's endless. This is just an idea. Now, what I will do before I pierce this, I'll put down some moss onto some hot glue onto the top of this piece of foam. I think it's just easier to do this portion. Kind of let it sit there and then you just kind of mush it. I mean, that's a technical term, by the way, mushing, so technical. And then you can, you know, it's gonna be loose on mine. I'm not worried about it. It's I don't have children, so nobody's coming up and gonna do anything. Now, if I go all the way to the bottom, that's how tall it will be. And I think that's a little tall. So let's, we're going to cut these where I stop the paint on this one. And that's what I'm using these, these wire nips for. I'd always tell you this. I have a decent size, a decent pair, not Dollar Tree ones. 
Yeah, I think that's going to be a good height. And then if you want them both to be the same, just hold them next to each other or lay them down. You know, it's not going to be perfect, but make sure your tops are good. And then your eyeball, your bottom. And then when you're going to really line them up is after you skewer them in here. But I'm going to... I like mine pretty much like that. <gasps> Guys, look at how cute that is. Then, so we're going to do that. Okay. And then we're going to do the same to this one. And all I'm doing, like I said, is sticking the moss on either side just to stabilize this foam inside here so it doesn't want to tip. They're a little top heavy. And then I'm going to stick my bow in between the two layers, I've decided. And you can make whatever kind of bow you want. I'll show you how I did it, but that's just what I chose to do. And then I'm going to glue down some moss here. And you take your time, you know. Hey, this is for social distancing. We have to be crafters. We need to do our thing, guys. Prevent the world from getting ill. And then we're just going to plop some on the top. I'm sorry if I am. Messing with you. Shaky. There we go. We got that. Now I'm going to put these next to each other. And because they're not exact, they're not sitting exactly next to each other, I think they're going to be okay. They're not perfectly the same height. And you also don't want this vertical height to be too high because what you're going to end up doing is um, they're going to end up tipping over. Okay, can I not do a straight line here? I'm going to say this is no. There we go. There we go, and that's in there. And now I have two topiaries that are almost exactly the same height. So give me a second, I'm gonna get rid of this green stuff and we're gonna make a bow. All right, so I took this ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It's just Grogain, it's called G-R-O-S-S. -S. Um, it's, or G-R-O-S-G-R-A-I-N, it's pronounced Grogain. So whatever size you want, honestly, the easiest way for me to do it it's so silly. It's so easy. I do it with a wire when I want to make a nice pretty bow. I literally just took like, what are these called? Like the um, support ribbons, like say for cancer or something like that shape. I make that, make sure my ends are the same and I pinch it to the middle. Take a piece of wire, ribbon, string, Whatever. Today was a wiring mood. Twist it in the back. Twist it. Done. I snipped off a piece, the piece, and I just left a little nubby. Don't cut it too close. Took my needle nose, twisted it under. Now I have a pretty bow. Just a very basic bow. That is one way to do it. There are a hundred thousand ways to make a bow. So that's how I did it. Now, I said I wanted to decorate the center of my bow, so I took these pearls and I went with this size. I have no idea what size that is. Just going to put a little drop of hot glue on it and stick it right in the center of this bow. And then I hold it just for a second, let it dry, and I just decided what size bow... Uh, bead I wanted because I held it in there and said oh that looks pretty I mean this this is so not scientific and it really I mean you could cover an entire um moss uh foam ball in beads sure could so I need to let that one sit for a second but we're gonna show ya I think I've decided that I would like my bow to sit here on the topiary between the two layers. 
I could also go right here or I could go maybe on the front of the, maybe here, like right on the front of the, yeah, let's do it right here. So make sure your back is good. And I can always trim my ribbon tails. That's a good side here. That's a good side. And then you just want to hold it and let it dry. And when these are dry, I will show you my finished product. And how easy was that? Can you imagine the colors you could do? You could paint your vase pastel. You could get metal buckets and paint them or not paint them. You could get the boxes. You can make a topiary out of literally anything at all. So that is what we have. And then I will stick it on my place and take a picture for you.